Good morning, good evening, how are you guys doing? So we, uh, we have an update to Clipper and a corresponding update to Shaketune. Uh, we're updating to Shaketune 2.6. Um, it's going to change some things and some of you aren't going to be very happy anymore. Uh, but the update is supposed to result in a more accurate depiction of what your your system is actually doing with the resonance the input shaper is actually doing on the system so uh, let's get to it this is the update to clipper so if you know from my previous videos clipper for the the damping ratio zeta defaults to 0.1 and uh, that's kind of a high value for our printers as you know we should be around the 0.5 ish anywhere from 0.4 to 0.6 is what um, vorons will generally do uh, in the damping ratio and when you select a shaper the, sh the damping ratio is used as part of the calculation for your vibrations the shaper all the data that the graphs give you uh, and that's built into clipper well, Clipper put, posted these, this update here, this uh, pull request, which I have, as you'll see, and I'll link these into the, uh, the description. And what they did is they allowed you to set a shaper in it, or sh I'm sorry, set a damping ratio into its calculation. And it also allowed you to incorporate uh, square corner velocity. So... As I've stated, they added the ability to set square corner velocity into it and damping ratios into their, the Clipper's built-in test residence. So, previous to this update, what Shaketune was doing was it was calculating the damping ratio based upon the graphs, but the suggestions of the vibrations and everything else was still based upon that 0.1 damping ratio that Clipper had built in. So we get some advantages with this, right? We're actually going to get a more realistic viewpoint of the vibrations of our machine. This is going to make some of you guys upset. It's generally going to lead to having vibrations on MZV. Uh, it's going to be harder to get zero vibrations on MZV. And the reason is not that your machine is any different or that somehow it's now screwed up. It's the fact that we're now getting a more accurate picture of what our machine is actually doing. Because we're not using, we're using the real or the calculated or the measured damping ratio in the calculations of, of our shapers and, and the resulting data from it. So I've got a bunch of graphs we're going to go through to show you this stuff. Um, we also have the ability now to bring in our square corner velocity into the, the resonance testing and to determine using that square corner velocity our smoothing or what our max smoothing is. And we can cycle through this square corner velocity now. We can, we can say, okay, how fast do we want to go on, on the square corner velocity? and where we we can step through it to get a maximum smoothing say you want a maximum smoothing in your graphs we'll, we'll get to that we'll get to that so this is this is kind of why the update and what we can do now with it as always uh tested it on my printer here the uh trident 350 as you can see i've got all the mods i've changed it from last time or last video uh we now have a regular plastic tap r8 which is the voron standard in this thing uh, I was doing some testing for somebody else and replacing taps like crazy and I just decided let's just put the good old tap R8 in there and see what it does um, GS so that's those are all the uh, the mods I'm using in this thing oh I always keep forgetting gotta add inverted electronics oh we already got it hi I got it this time remembered okay so this is my uh, ADXL config, pretty standard. I'm excelling at, uh, doing my excels per hertz at 100. 75 is standard with Clipper. I jack it up to 100 because it's, you know, I just want to hit it. So for those that don't know that this excel per hertz is basically how hard 
you can think of it as how hard the system is hitting each frequency. 75 Hertz is the standard value. You can go up to about 133 Hertz. You start going more than that and you're you're pushing it so when it when it hits that that uh, goes like say you're going from 0 to 133 Hertz it's going to make it so much harder. It's like going to boom, 100 hertz, boom, you know, just hitting it. You have a more chance of uh, screws coming loose the higher you put this value up. You have more chance of things to shake and loose because you're shaking it harder, um, if that makes sense on that. Uh, so this is the new uh, input screen for uh, sh axis shaper or input shaper. You can see we have now have square corner velocity and we have some max smoothing. Um, if you don't set these values, or if you don't set square corner velocity, it pulls it from what you set in your printer dot CFG. So you can set it as none, but it's going to read it in from your printer and it will, will run that. You don't have to put a max smoothing down. If you put a max smoothing, it will try to fit the, the, uh, fit the shapers to have that max smoothing. And I'll show you an example of that. All right, sorry about that. Uh, I just realized while I was talking and I didn't run the test I was talking about. So uh, max smoothing, we'll see that um, where I've limited it and we can see the results of that. So we're gonna get into the graphs and see what's changed. So in regards to belt shaper, nothing has really changed here. Uh, it's all this, it's still the same belt shaper that you used before. Vibration uh, calibration hasn't really changed. It's still the same basic test and the same results. But once again, you want to stay in the valleys, avoid the peaks. This is what's changed. So uh, from a pretty perspective, we can see that it's been added to our square corner velocity that the test has been run at is being shown here. This was taken from, I didn't set, for this run, I didn't set anything. It was just taken straight from printer config. And max smoothing, I didn't set one. We can see that in the past, this graph most likely would have resulted in 0% um, vibrations. Now we've got 1.2. Uh, this is the biggest change. And this, you know, some of you guys I know aren't going to be happy. You're like, what the hell happened? This is what happened. This zeta now is, oh, let's get rid of that. This is the more accurate. This is actually getting fed into the input shaper algorithms, right? Previously it was 0 0.1, and that's what was being fed in. This is no longer it. We're using the actual zetas. And the same over here. Um, now you see, got the vibrations here, the vibrations here. You know, this is probably this maybe two of them will go like this. So this is the biggest change. You are now going to get vibrations. And for some of us, this makes sense. Because for some of us, we were getting zero vibrations on MZV, yet our Voron cubes, you know, were still showing residence. They were still showing some sort of, of ghosting on the X or Y axis. And now we can see that, yeah, it, it all along was actually having vibrations on having ring, but for us using the 0 0.1 damp uh, zeta, it made it look like it wasn't anything. So we're hoping that this now is a now more accurate reflection of what the machine is actually doing so that we can use these improved values to further tune our machine and try, or at the very least, drop down, right? Drop down a shaper. Maybe we're not using MZV anymore. Maybe we got to use EI, you know? It, 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 but it's telling us more, a, a more accurate reflection of our printer. So the next test I did was I upped uh, square corner velocity now to 10, and I said, well, I only want a max smoothing of 0.2. And X is always going to be able to get this, right? Even even at 3 hump EI, it's getting 0.8. Uh, but over here in the Y shaper, we got a little harder time to get that 0.2. So we can, you know, we're going to get some vibrations here. But it's getting, it's you know, we, we got, got there. 
So then I did it again. I said, why not just try it again? And I went to 15. Uh, now you can see we have 0.17 smoothing here. Previously we had 0.15, and previous to that we had 0.14. So for those that don't know, square corner velocity directly influences the smoothing. And what is smoothing? Uh, Everyone here, I, I, I think, has ran a, run a benchy, you know, the boat benchy. And on the back of the benchy, there's lettering. And it's barely visible, right? It's hard to see. Well, that's because it's got smoothing going on. And the more smoothing you have, the less visible that lettering is going to be until basically it just blends in with the back of the boat. So if you want sharp, crisp detail, you want the least amount of smoothing in your shaper as possible. But you got this trade-off where you can get less smoothing, but you're going to get more vibration from your shaper. So picking the shaper that gives you the least amount of ringing, the least amount of smoothing, while getting maximizing square corner velocity. Right? How fast can you cut those corners? Are those square corner velocity is a 90 degree, so how much does it slow down and, and speed to hit the, um, the corner? A 90 degree or greater? Or 90 degree or less so if you're going like 130 degrees it's not going to slow down all the way but if you're doing a 90 it's going to slow down to whatever your scv is and if you go less it's going to slow down even more so by increasing this value you can take the turns faster um, but it has a direct effect upon smoothing uh let's let's see here so just let's let's do a little so standard scv is anywhere in the range of uh, five to eight. Your max SCV before you just think you just get way too much smoothing and it starts looking like crap is ten to twelve. You can calculate. You can do a calculated. Let's call it a rough. A rough calculated square corner velocity by taking your max Excel. Excel on Shaper and dividing it by a thousand. That's the kind of if you want to see, okay, what can I really do? You can do this. You can do this calculation. Or you can do like most of us and leave it at five. But if you're into tuning, this is what you're looking for. So if we look at my Shaper, let's go here. What's it telling us here? Right, let's, we'll use MZV 4400. That's 4.4. Right? So if we do this, Oh, where to go? If we do my my example here, we do 4400 divided by 1000. That's telling me I should be running a 4.4 square corner velocity. And you can you can do this. Why not? Right? I mean, if you're going to update your shapers and clipper, why not update your uh, your square corner velocity? You can run that test. I suggest running some tests first, seeing what it looks like, or just plug this value this 4.4 back into uh, back into the input shaper. You've calculated, you saw it, calculated, let's do it. If you give me a minute, I will do that one. I'll do that test and I'll be right back. All right, so just got done running that test. You guys are really bearing with me here. Uh, these are the results. Uh, you can see up here, it tells you your square corner velocity of 4.4, 4.4. I did a quick comparison, nothing really changed much. Um, if so if we go back to the original, the vibrations here is about the same. Let's see, let's look down here. So we got 0.15, it, it's de minimis, and 0 0.6, 0 0.6, so 0.7. So going from 5 to 4.4 didn't really change. Uh, it might change in the print. I haven't done any prints on this as you know at all. It's just, just discussing the graphs. But this is what another, another tool you guys can use in your toolbox if you want to even try to uh, optimize your printer. If you want to figure out how you actually do this, calculate it. This is the rough calculation, and so that's this is the results. Um, so then I changed the frequency to 150 and see what happened. Um, it basically just drags some stuff out and not much. There wasn't much change. 
Um, this is about 133. Let's go back over here. So we can see that's about 133 because this, this test only runs up to 133 hertz. And that's basically the cutoff of it. We can see that it continued on, continues on here. This is the tool head in X. Uh, this is most likely um, my umbilical. But they're both below the warning, re or both in the warning region or below. Uh, so the effect, I mean, this, this might have an effect. I got to run some prints on this thing. Haven't done that yet. This is really just to get the update out and let you guys know what's what it's about. Uh, this is the next test where I uh, limited the smoothing. So I said, I want no more than 0.1 smoothing. And X, it doesn't matter, right? It, X is, is 0.6. What's our original? 0.6. It, it's, it's not going to matter. It's going to matter in Y. So when we limit the smoothing, right, let's, let's just do a recap here. It's already above 0.1, right? 0.14 to 0.16. So what happens when we artificially limit it smoothing, we're getting vibrations all over the place. Vibrations. So this is that this is that that back and forth, right? Where how, how much smoothing do you want in the, your print? Do you want really crisp prints or do you want no ringing? Or do you want some ringing, some crisp? Like this is this is this is the optimization of, for you guys, right? So if we go back here if you're happy with 0.14 smoothing, like you don't need that fine, fine detail. And to be honest with you, most of us don't. Especially if we're doing architectural parts or printer parts or stuff like that. We don't need the fine, fine detail. Um, I don't know many people that are actually running minis on, on, on the, these printers. Um, I know for like Dungeons & Dragon type scenery you're not really going to notice the smoothing it uh yeah some finer details on things may go off but personally i'm happy with getting the 0.14 smoothing it doesn't really on my other printers it doesn't really matter but if it did matter to you this is going to be your trade-off your trade-off is going to be vibrations you're going to get ringing uh, maybe you want to tune that into 0.12 maybe you'll get less right but you're getting ringing all over this here uh that's so that's kind of the update to shake tune uh shake tune 2.6 so uh you know any questions uh feel free to to join me for in discord under residence testing um i do i finally got all the rest of my uh uh adx cells and the different types of adx cells so we're going to go over those um and uh talk about them, the pros and cons, uh, what, well, just how I kind of feel about the different ones. Um, maybe it's worth it to you, maybe not. Anyway, uh, so that's the update. I uh, hope this was informational or informative for you. If you got anything, just reach out to Voron Discord or, you know, drop a comment.